picture this. You're in the Big Brother house. It's Thursday night. You're stressing over who's going to win HOH. And yes, thank God, your ally just won HOH. And you breathe a sigh of relief that you're not going home. You sit back, relax, and... Oh, that was unexpected. You were my ally. Why didn't you save me? Throughout Big Brother history, there have been many occasions where someone won power, whether it be the HOH or the veto, and as a direct result of them using or not using said power, one of their allies goes home. Today, we are going to go over five instances of someone sending home their own ally in Big Brother. Unless Fess had some kind of secret deal with somebody, this doesn't make any sense! This is so freaking stupid! Why would he put his ally on the block against some guy who keeps staying no matter who he's up against? To start things off, in Big Brother 6, we get none other than Howie. In week 4, Maggie had been the HOH and sent home one of Howie's closest allies, Kaser. In an effort to bounce back, Howie went out and won the week 5 HOH. Howie was in an alliance with the duo James and Sarah, so with Howie winning HOH and there being a pretty clear line drawn in the sand with the other side of the house, especially since Maggie just sent home one of Howie's main allies, things should have been looking good for the Sovereign Six. However, before Howie made his nominations, Maggie went up to Howie and tried to persuade him otherwise. Maggie informed Howie that during the prior week when Maggie was HOH, James had sworn on the Bible that if he was the HOH, he would nominate Howie and his partner Rachel in an attempt to be safe with the friendship. The thing is, James was lying. But Howie didn't know that. So with some really solid work from Maggie, she successfully convinced him that he couldn't trust James. So come nominations, Howie sided with Maggie and chose to nominate James and his partner Sarah, two people in his alliance. With both of them on the block and no longer having the numbers in the house, it guaranteed that Howie had just sent home one of his allies. James went on to win the veto that week, and as a result, Sarah, a direct member of Howie's alliance, was sent home on his HOH. Oh my god, if everyone keeps their word, I get to stay here an extra week. I don't have to compete in the veto contest to save my hide. You know, James and Sarah, they are two of my strongest allies, but when James knew he was going up, he was up there bargaining my life. If I can I promise. He shot himself in the foot. You better be nervous right now, James and Sarah. They're uh, two of my biggest enemies in this game, but at the same time, they're my ally by this much. But we all have a consensus problem in the house. Are you kidding? Unless we as a group work together, yeah. he's gonna win. You yeah. have the entire yeah. house. Maggie said, you know, if I put up James and Sarah this week, no matter who comes to the doors next week, whether if it's Eric, I'm safe from Eric. Sarah and James, I nominated the both of you. James, I think you're a dangerous, dangerous player. I, I right now just found out that I don't have a single friend in this house. I'm, I'm completely stunned. Rachel Howie and Janelle cannot be that stupid. Sarah, you have been evicted from the Big Brother house. Look, there's no rhyme or reason to the ordering this week, but just know that this is one of my favorites. It's also one of the most famous examples. It's Fessy in Big Brother 20. In week 7, Fessy's showman's Haley was the HOH, but through the hacker twist, their ally Rockstar was sent packing in a vote of 5-1, to one, with Scotty being the only person to save Rockstar. Fessy's alliance was dwindling as it was down to just himself, Haley, and Scotty. But Fessy kept hope alive by pulling through and winning HOH after Rockstar was evicted, and with the hacker twist over, there was no way he was going to lose an ally this week. Right? Right? No, of course not. After Fessy won HOH, he asked everyone in the HOH room who was the one person who voted to save Rockstar. Scotty obviously raised his hand as he was the person who kept her, but after a little bit, Brett also stood up and claimed to be the sole vote to save Rockstar, and poor little Fessy got confused. Even though it was clear as day to us viewers that obviously Brett wasn't the vote to save Rockstar and Scotty was, Fessy wasn't convinced. He had already found Scotty to be sketchy in the game previously, and he also had JC in his ear all week long about how Scotty liked Haley and that Scotty couldn't be trusted. Not knowing who was telling the truth, Fessy said, F it, and he nominated both Scotty and Brett, with the reasoning being that, well, one of them was lying to him. 
That logic is so faulty because it guarantees that you put up the person who is actually telling you the truth instead of, you know, the four other people who openly voted against you the week before. Scotty really didn't do himself any favors throughout the week either. And once Brett won the veto, Scotty's fate was sealed. There were no numbers in the house to save Scotty. And at the end of the week, Fessy had sent home one of the only allies he had left in the game. And he was stoked about it. Oh, Fessy. I'm confident Fess will keep me safe, and I'm happy if anyone won, it's him. You sure Scotty's the one? Yeah. You trust Scotty. I, I just want to know who was the one person to keep Rockstar. Anybody else? So, everybody agrees with Scotty. It, it was me. I voted to keep Rockstar. I vote to evict Rockstar. Brett's trying to turn me into the Patsy. It's absolutely cute that he thinks that he can pull this crap. You're a bull actor. What the f are you talking about? I want to believe Scotty because he's in my alliance, and Brett doesn't seem too confident when he says he was the one vote to keep Rockstar. Somebody's lying. I have nominated you, Brett, and you, Scotty, yesterday during my HOH meeting. I asked who the one vote to keep Rockstar was. Both of y'all raised your hands, but Julie said there was only one vote to keep Rockstar. Somebody's lying. I nominated both Brett and Scotty because they're both liars, and I'm not afraid to make a big move in this house. I don't trust either of them, and I don't give a damn which one of them goes home. I'm here to play, baby. He's literally taking his number and getting rid of it for no reason. Scotty. You are evicted from the Big Brother house. My HOH was absolutely brilliant. If you want something done right, you do it your damn self. Up next, we have an absolutely phenomenal moment. Probably a top three moment in the show's history. At the final four of Big Brother 14, Daniel Murphy was in a really good spot. She had her showman's Shane with her, and she had her coach slash number one ally as well, Dan. To sweeten things up even more, Danielle had won the Final Four HOH, guaranteeing her spot on finale night and having a good chance at keeping both of her boys safe. Nominations don't particularly matter at the Final Four, but Dan insisted that he be nominated next to Ian, so Danielle did as Dan said and kept Shane off the block. Everyone knows that what really mattered, though, was the veto, and as long as Ian didn't win, Danielle figured she'd be able to take both of her boys to the Final Three and Ian would be evicted in fourth place. So, come the veto comp, Danielle went out and crushed it. She won the veto, and all she had to do was sit back and wait for eviction night to come so Shane could evict Ian. But obviously, if that was what happened, I wouldn't be talking about it right now. You see, Dan had a final two with Danielle, but he also had a final two with Ian, and the only person he didn't have a final two with was Shane. But since he was on the block and didn't win the veto, his hands were basically tied behind his back. But this is Dan Giesling we're talking about, and he had one more trick up his sleeve. With evil intentions, Dan went to Danielle and pitched to her probably the only thing that made enough sense for her to believe him. Dan didn't trust Shane to keep him safe. He said that if he's ever on the block come eviction night, he's going home, even sitting next to Ian. However, even though Dan felt Shane would vote him out, he himself would never vote out Shane, as he too really wanted Ian gone. So what if Danielle used the veto on Dan, forcing Shane to go up in his place, and then have Dan send Ian home, and they all get to the final three? It seemed like a perfect plan, albeit unnecessary, but in the end, Danielle trusted Dan and used the veto to save him. Ever so grateful, Dan thanked Danielle by instantly turning his back on her and evicting her showman Shane instead of Ian. Yikes. Danielle was at the final four and had all of the power, yet somehow at the end of the day, her showman was evicted. Had she not used the veto, she makes it to the final three with Dan and Shane and both of them bring her to final two, but instead she used the veto and had to sit there and watch as Dan broke her trust for the millionth time and see Shane walk out the front door. <laughs> If Shane's comfortable with Danielle, he's gonna do what Danielle wants. And Danielle's gonna do what I tell her to do. Even if that means sending her boyfriend out the door. I'm not making you in and you Dan for eviction. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh, I just pulled this off. I am so excited. I get to keep my boys safe. Dan, Shane, and I are going to final three, and I hope all the power once again. Congratulations, Thanks. former player. 
I know you're safe, even if you stay on the block, no matter what. Anytime I'm sitting on the block after the veto, I'm going home. Are you serious? Yeah. So you don't trust Shane, correct? Uh, I don't. So, if I pull you down, are you saving Shane? Yeah. You swear? Yeah, I'll do whatever you want. If I took Dan off. Dan off what? The block. Yep. Then he would trust me that me and you aren't that close. That's true. And then mm -hmm. he's going to save you no matter what because he's so sick at you and he can't see okay. straight. All right. This decision is based on my own personal game. I've decided to use the power of veto to save you, Dan. Right, Danielle, look in your hands and look up. Real quick, Shane, you're a heck of a competitor. Ian, you're an equal competitor. Both of you guys got a great shot to win this game. Shane, I'm sorry, I have to evict you. And now, the one you've likely been waiting for, we have Daniel using the veto to send Nicole home in week four of Big Brother 24. After being blindsided the previous week when Amira was evicted, close allies Daniel and Nicole figured for some reason that they would still have the numbers to get Taylor evicted, even against Nicole, as they had to be nominated together since they were festy besties. Monty was the head of household and nominated the besties of Alyssa and Indy for eviction, and the plan was for Nicole and Taylor to be nominated after the veto ceremony. Daniel and Nicole were not only on board with the plan, but were pushing for it. However, they didn't know that the real plan was for Nicole to be evicted over Taylor. At the veto comp, who better to come out victorious than Daniel? So it was looking like Daniel was going to use the veto to save Indy and Alyssa and have Nicole and Taylor be the replacements. But at some point during the week, Daniel and Nicole got suspicious that they might not actually have the numbers to send Taylor home, meaning Nicole would be in danger on the block. So they changed their mind about using the veto and now weren't going to use it. As a viewer, that sucked because I was excited to watch Daniel sent home his closest ally, Nicole. At the same time, Monty, the HOH, was also convinced by Michael that it was best to keep the nominations the same. So before the veto ceremony, Monty, trying to further convince Daniel not to use the veto, went to him and said, hey, I don't think it's wise if you use the veto because I don't think Nicole would have the votes to stay over Taylor. But somehow, crazily, this had the opposite effect. Daniel was already thinking that Monty was on the other side working with Taylor, and in Daniel's mind, the only reason that Monty would be telling Daniel not to use the veto is if he was scared that Taylor didn't have the numbers, and that he was trying to scare Daniel out of using the veto because he knew Nicole would stay and Taylor would be evicted. So in Daniel's head, he probably went, ha, you think you're so smart, Monty. Well, guess what? I see right through you, and now I'm going to use the veto even harder than before. So, after being told by Monty to not use the veto, Daniel and Nicole changed their minds again and went back to their original plan of having Daniel use the veto to save Indy and Alyssa, and Nicole and Taylor were then nominated. And then, of course, Nicole was evicted near unanimously against Taylor. Oh, Daniel, you could have been totally fine this week. You won the veto, and neither you nor your closest ally, Nicole, were on the block. But... You got greedy wanting Taylor out, and because of it, you'll forever be known as the guy who used the veto to send his number one ally home. Among other things, of course. This nomination ceremony is adjourned. The only person I can trust in this house is Daniel. I'm really hoping I get picked for this veto because I want a gun for it, win the thing, and not use it. Kyle and Daniel, you have won the golden power of veto! Woo! So last night, the Leftover Alliance came up with a new plan to not use the power of veto and keep the nominations the same. Now, if I put you and Taylor on the block, now I'm feeling less confident about where the votes lie. Blah, blah, blah. Like, shut up, Monty. I've been trained to know when somebody is lying to me. I have the numbers to stay. Taylor will be going home. God, he's such a horrible liar. I it sounded like Monty's fully aware that he doesn't have the votes to get rid of Nicole this week. Well, guess what? If you don't want me to use this veto, I'm 100% going to use it. We have decided to use the power of veto on Indy and Alyssa. Nicole and Taylor. I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever this excited to be on the block. Ugh, just killing it. We're killing it today. So amazing. By a vote of nine to one, Nicole, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Nicole, wait for me in LA. Now, for the last one, I have one Big Brother Canada one that I would like to talk about. If you don't want to be spoiled on Big Brother Canada, now's your chance to save yourself. However, 
This is one of my personal favorites and I highly recommend you listen. Okay, there have been many instances of someone sending home their ally in Big Brother Canada. Zach with Jordan, Cindy with Neda, and even Marty with Gino. But there's only one in particular that I wanna discuss because it's one of the only times in Big Brother history that someone sent home their ally due to misreading the voting dynamics and just voting incorrectly. In Big Brother Canada 3, we have the triple eviction. Brittany won the HOH and was told to nominate three house guests. The way a triple eviction works in Canada is that once it's time to vote, you vote for the player you want to save. And the person with the most votes is safe and the other two nominees would then be evicted. Brittany nominated Pilar, Kevin, and Zach, with her targets being the two men. However, Bruno won the veto and made a wildly unexpected move and saved his opponent, Zach, which threw off Brittany's plans, and she decided to nominate Willow in his place, meaning that the final nominees were Pilar, Kevin, and Willow. One of the house guests, Sarah Hanlon, was extremely close with Willow and wanted her to stay over the other two. But there was a blow up between Sarah and Bruno after the veto where Bruno called out that it was likely the six girls working together against the few guys, which led Sarah to believe that Zach and Bruno were going to vote to save Kevin. With only five people voting, and since Sarah figured that Godfrey and Ashley were saving Pilar, and since she was convinced that Zach and Bruno were going to try to save Kevin, she wanted to salvage something from the week in an attempt to keep a girl safe and make sure that Kevin was evicted, Sarah ended up voting to save Pilar. However, Sarah had a huge misread. This is because the guys didn't end up voting to save Kevin. They voted to save Willow. So the vote was two to two to save either Pilar or Willow, and Sarah was unknowingly the deciding vote. Had she known where the votes were, she would have saved Willow and she would have survived the triple, but because she thought the boys were voting to keep Kevin, she decided to vote to save Pilar, sealing Willow's fate and evicting her from the house in a vote of three to two to zero. Had Sarah voted with her heart, Willow would have still been in the game, but she tried to vote tactically and it cost her one of her closest allies going to go for uh, Willow. Saving Willow, right? Yeah. What? We have to save, save Willow. Willow. We have to save Willow. Because you were coming for me. All right. I talk like I'm a yeah. your boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hey, let me guess. You want I'm six like girls Willow. against two boys. Like That's what you want? Like Born to save Willow. Peely. Peely. I gotta save Willow. I want to save Willow, but hopefully if I save Peely, it can keep a girl. So I vote to save Peely. Pilar, you are safe. Kevin, Willow, you have been evicted from the Big Brother Canada house. Right after the eviction, Godfrey tells me that the guys were actually trying to vote to keep Willow and not Kevin. And in the heat of the moment, I voted to keep Peely. That means that I voted Willow out. And I'm really, really mad at myself for not going with my heart. And there we go. There were, of course, other times that someone had sent their ally home, like Kalia sending Luan home after he asked to be evicted, or Zakia going home when Polly won the veto and didn't use it on her. But these were the ones I was most excited to talk about. Anytime someone sends their ally home, it's always toted as one of the worst moves in the show's history. And although it's definitely an exaggeration to say that every time, it admittedly is almost always a very bad move. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who I can guarantee I would never evict if I had the power. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Bessel's HOH this week, and I could not be more excited. The power is back in our hands, but this time there's no hacker competition to screw anything up. Hmm.